Now, so far, we've been talking about different types of searches, specifically this idea that, again, I have this sort of starting point and I have this goal point. And everything that we've done, you know, A star, the Brett first, step first, all of them, they spent this, or they use this notion that specifically each action, right, was leading me to a new state. Say this is action one, this is action two, moving to some new state, and then we will eventually lead into our goal. The big issue, though, is specifically this idea of an adversarial search. Now, this sort of first move, sure, that was sort of my move, but one of the things that we have to think about is maybe there are other agents in the environment and they are also working uh, on the same environment. And in fact, we can think about this second action as your move or their move, their move. And so we have to actually kind of think about this. We have to start to plan when someone else is moving and doing actions. And specifically, we have to think about this idea that they may be working against us. You know, they're, they're potentially looking at their own goals that they want to work through. And some good ideas, some ways to kind of see this are through some different types of games. Specifically, we can start to kind of model these in different kind of terminologies. You know, we have sort of the ones that we typically see inside of a, an AI course, the deterministic, perfect information type uh, exercises. These are easy to map, easy to model. Uh, the entire idea is you can see, for example, every potential move that's going on in chess. You know, my agent gets to do a move, then maybe the uh, another agent gets to do their move. And specifically, when we think about this idea of it being perfect, all of those moves can be modeled. Now, that starts to change when we start to get to imperfect information because maybe I can't model all of the information. My agent, sure, has their battleships uh, down on their board, but I don't know where the battleships of my opposing agent uh, are. And so I would have to kind of make some assumptions about what their side of the board works with. Then when we start to get into the idea of chance, well, now we're adding probabilities to this. Dice rolls, for example, when we think about, uh, say, for example, Monopoly or a shuffled deck in poker. I don't know what card is going to be placed down next. I don't know what the agent's dice rolls are going to be. And so it's a little harder to model those types of games. But like I said, specifically when we are at least kind of in this class, the idea is we're working off of this idea of a deterministic, fully observed, and then a new fancy $5 word, zero sum game. So what is a zero sum game? The idea here is that what we're looking at is our agent, so uh, we'll call them agent one. Our agent is specifically attempting to maximize a, a an end value. If we're thinking about something like the linear search or the linear assignment problem that we've kind of talked about previously, this is I want to get the biggest value out of the configuration. I want to get the biggest value out of my actions. But like I said, there's an adversarial agent also in play. And so that agent, they're specifically wanting to work off that same value, but they want to shrink it down as best as they can. So again, thinking linear assignment, they want the smallest value possible. And it's sort of this combat, uh, combat of uh, our two agents, um, whether or not we're going to get a big value or a small value. Specifically, again, when we think about our agent, we are always kind of looking at it, at least from our kind of perspective of, we want to maximize our, our value. There are some other little terminologies you could, you know, learn about, like this idea that we are dealing with a ply. Uh, so agent one does a ply and then agent two does a reply, right? Uh, either way, let's start to formalize this out. So when we think about things, if we say, for example, worked off of just a simple tic-tac-toe board, uh, that'll be sort of our easiest way to kind of visualize this. 
The big idea is this blank board, well, you could consider that to be state zero. The board is empty. We know whose turn it potentially is. You know, for our sake, we could ask that question. We could say, well, what is or who is the player at S0? And we might, you know, say that that's, oh, player one. Or for our sake, since we're playing with tic-tac-toe, player X. Player X is getting to go first. It may be player O, uh, you know. It's whoever's the oldest and tells you which one for tic-tac-toe, I think. But for our sake, we'll say player X is going first. Well, then we ask that same kind of question. Well, what are the legal actions? What are all the valid actions that can happen at S0? Well, if we're again thinking that it's only X's turn, there are three potential, or sorry, uh, nine potential moves, right? We can go to the top corner, we can go to the top middle, we can go to the top corner again on the other side, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, until we get to the bottom corner. Those are all, again, valid moves. Okay, fine. So now what we're looking at is given these different actions, so I'll call this one uh, A1, A2, A3, all the way to A9. What we're looking at is now finally, the, finally this idea of what happens as a result. So think of this like when we were kind of talking about this idea of perceiving the environment. When I do an action, what happens to the environment? So in that case, if I'm at S0, right, what if I gave it the action of A9? And so again, this would produce some new state, S1, that is, in our case, this position. Fair enough. But as you can sort of see, well, same kind of song and dance would happen. Who is the player at S1? Oh, well, now it's O's turn. All right, well, what are all the valid options for, uh, or all the valid actions from this state, S1? One, all of them except for this A9 are available to it. So we'll scratch that one out for our sake. And then if we're looking at that, let's say, what is the result of uh, S1 with action? Why not, um, let's see, six. And well, that would turn this into its own new state, state two with an X at the bottom and an O here and you'd continue to play this out over and over again. And eventually you're gonna reach terminal states. So the idea of a terminal test is when there are no possible moves or a winning condition has occurred. So you can again think about this as what makes the game over. In tic-tac-toe, there's three different sort of ways. Or There's X gets to win, there's O gets the win, or we get into that weird situation where, uh, let's see, I'm doing my best to X, uh, O, and X. So we've got X wins, O wins, or there is a draw. Then we've got just this idea of false. The game is still playing. This is not a terminal state. But specifically, you notice that sort of second section here, this idea of a utility. If we're looking at all of our different states, we may want to ask this question, well, well, what's the value of this particular state? So if we're looking at, say, for example, this first notion, right, where we have uh, X is here, O is here, X is here, O is here, right? Well, again, we could look at that next action, right? The difference between sort of placing our X let me change colors here. Or let me draw out just three different versions so we can sort of see them uh, all playing out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If we look at now this notion of, well, what if I did this move? What if I did this move? And what if I did this move? Well, again, we're looking at this from the utilities perspective. Given this state for this player, how well is this move? So for our player X, the utility for this first one is a one. 
or we could assign it some other value, but we could say that we are giving this winning state a one. Uh, this would be a zero for our uh, player, and this would also be a zero because those are draws. Now again, you could play these out differently depending on your game, but this is sort of the general theme that you're looking for. That same kind of idea can come into play, and let me just make a different color real quickly. If, say for example, we were sort of, again, playing that same notion, X is here, O went here, X went here, O went here, for whatever reason the agent chose to go down this route, oh, that's actually perfect, uh, <laughs> I gotta, there we are. All right. There, there, I'm gonna pick there, there, hmm. here, here. Okay, now, so again, we're looking at the two different possibilities for X. Mm -hmm. So if X takes here, and O takes here, you could say that this is a losing state for player X. Again, this is a bad move because I'm going to lose or my player X agent is going to lose. And again, you keep on choosing different values depending on what you're looking for. But this is where we start to get into this notion of something known as the minimax search, which we'll dig into a little later. This is that idea that let's assume that there is two, there are two agents. We have our agent that we're gonna call Max, and then we have their agent that we're gonna call Min. And so again, this notion is that if we're looking at the tic-tac-toe board, what are all the possible actions that Max could be working with? And again, we're typically thinking about this uh, as a recursive method. So we don't immediately make a decision, we're planning. It's like, oh, if I do this, dot, 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 then it's Min's turn, and oh, well, then Min will do this, dot, dot, dot. So again, Max is placed in that top corner, Min places into the top middle, okay. So now what would I do if, again, I'm playing out as Max? Oh, well, in that case, I do this, dot, dot, dot. And so you keep on playing this out, and I won't do it for the entire time. You can see that it just keeps on mapping out. And so what happens, though, is each one of these is given this min max node. And so once again, just like we were saying, as we move towards terminal states where the game is in fact over, you can see that if we find ourselves in a situation where our agent, AKA max is the loser, well, that would be a state that we give a negative one to. Uh, in our case, uh, our agent draws so again, that's okay. It's better than not. It's better than not losing, uh, or it's better than losing. There's the word. Uh, so okay, you know maybe that's the best we can work out towards. But again, you notice it specifically that negative one is less than zero, and then specifically if there is a winning condition, well we can see that our agent won. I'm sorry, our loses. Our Hours here we go. There we are. Now we now we got proper English. Uh, so we've got the negative one where we lose. We've got the zero when we draw, and then we've got the positive one when we win. And so it's through these combinations that in our next video we'll talk about the mini max search.